but Tinkerbell can't be black and you have to be a boy to be a lost boy. Man, you all sound like friggin' idiots. I am a Peter Pan lore enthusiast. I have been studying this story since I was a little child. I've been doing video essays on it on my YouTube channel for a couple of years now, and I even wrote my dissertation on it back in university. I guarantee I know this story better than you do. And guess what? Tinkerbell can be any friggin' colour under the sun, and there can be any gender of lost boy. Also, fun fact, it is canonical in the original lore dating back to 1904 that there were various different genders other than cisgender on the Neverland. But hey, I can't expect you to take a sensible person who actually knows this source material's word for it, so I'm going to read to you from the original story and prove it. Here is the only physical description we get of Tinkerbell in the entire novel, and it isn't long. It was a girl called Tinkerbell, exquisitely gowned in a skeleton leaf, cut low and square, through which her figure could be seen to the best advantage. She was slightly inclined to embonpoir. Couple of things this means. Number one, Tinkerbell was curvy, and she rocked it. Also not forgetting that Tinkerbell is a fairy. Why are you trying to give her a human skin colour when she may very well be bright turquoise? And lastly, of course, the author, the creator of this character, J.M. Barry, did not specify what she looked like. Therefore, you can imagine her however you want. Sure, you can imagine her as white with a fluffy blonde bob. Go for it. But don't you dare start claiming that's the original, because it isn't. And now let's talk about those lost boys, shall we? Because people are getting really aggy about that in my comment section lately. The argument people seem to love to make in my comment sections right now is that But Peter said to Wendy that there are no girls on the island, and that girls are much too clever to fall out of their prams. Yes, he did say that. But you're forgetting the rest of the context of that scene. Right before Peter starts saying all these wonderful things about girls, he has annoyed Wendy. So much so that she has refused to continue talking to him and put herself to bed. And she's ignoring him. So the entire scene where Peter is complimenting her and saying how much he respects and loves girls, while he does respect and love girls, he is also playing it up tremendously to try and win Wendy back on site. These are the words of someone who is desperately trying to get back in Wendy's good books, and he knows that by complimenting girls, he can do so. And it works. Also, let's not forget that Peter Pan forgets everyone and everything over time. Within two years of the darling children leaving the Neverland, Peter has completely forgotten Tinkerbell and Captain Hook. Tinkerbell being his best closest friend and Captain Hook being his worst enemy. Yeah, Peter even forgot the darling children on the flight to the Neverland. He would be the last person to remember what gender his lost boys were. And also, he wouldn't care because it's canonical in the lore of the Neverland that there are many different fairies of various different genders, not just male and female. So he would be perfectly used to that, and wouldn't care, and so would the Neverland. So yeah, try going back and reading the original source material before you start claiming crap like you have been in people's comment sections.